Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, two things I'm going to um, I have an information for you today, and then we'll call forth our daily bread. Now, this evening by six o'clock West African time, um, we're going to have a special program, and the, the information should be on, on the screen. I want you to join us. If you are in the city of Abuja, please come down. But if you are not, or if you cannot really come down physically, you can join us online and be blessed also. I'm trusting the Spirit of God that the sick will be healed and many. Now, now the title of the program is The Spirit of Prophecy. So this is it. You're going to be impacted tonight with the spirit of prophecy and changes will begin to come into your life. You are going to begin to experience a new turn of events in your life. Praise God. I'm hoping to see you either on site or online. God bless you. Praise God. Now, are you ready? Let's call for that daily bread. If you are as I am, now, I'm not just leading you to do this. I'm also making this demand for myself. Praise God. And it's been walking. Glory to God. Praise God. Now, can we go call for that daily bread? Join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, when we've been talking about the light from Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18. Now he says here, I'm reading the Amplified Version. He says, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. And I was telling you yesterday that everything about your life boils down to how you see. The light by which you are seen. I explained to you yesterday about the functionality of the eyes you have. And then there is another eye you have, which is the eye of your mind. And that one is most, more, more important actually than even this physical. If you have physical eyes, but then all you see from your heart is darkness, it is a terrible situation. Is a terrible situation. Jesus actually said it, that if the light that is in you is darkness, how terrible that darkness is. Because it will lead you. You see, it is by that eyes you make decisions in life. And if your decisions are made in darkness, then you're in big trouble. So you see why it is important to hear sound teaching. Sound. Now I'll tell you the truth. Sound teaching doesn't always sit properly with your heart. It doesn't always sit properly because you see, sound teaching will, will inspire you to change your posture. The purpose of God's word is to change you. It's not to massage you. It's to change. It's to make you wake up. And the more you have, you can never get to that point where you've You've, you've, you've so transformed that now you're just there. You know, oh, we know that. I know this. I know this. I know. No, it will always propel you to get up. So is a, is an eternal life of transformation. Or should I use the word? Is an everlasting life of transformation. We keep being transformed and being transformed and being transformed. As we look, as we look, the more we see, the more we're transformed into the same image. The more we see, the more we're transformed into the same image. So sound teaching will always force you out of that comfort zone in your mind to the place of confirmation. Because you will need to conform to it. And that's where the work is. See that? That's why I keep telling you, look, if things are going to change around you, the first thing that must change is you. 
You must change what you're looking at. You must change what you're seeing. Now, sometimes you find people, yesterday I talked to you about how you can expose yourself to demonic influence and things like that by the things you expose your, the eyes of your mind to begin to see. Now, if you expose your mind to see the wisdom and the power of God, you will realize that the environment you flow is far greater than where those demonic things walk. And you realize that you don't need all that energy you used to put in, 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 into it, fighting demons. You realize it when you, when you stay in the place of God's wisdom. See that now? And then also, <clears throat> if you stay in the place of God's wisdom, exposing your mind to his light, you realize that, you, you know, have you ever thought about it, that every time in scripture where God had a communication with Satan, it wasn't a harsh fighting communication. God wasn't saying, get out there, get out, Satan. You, you remember the Bible said the sons of God gathered in the book of Job, sons of God gathered and Satan came also. And we didn't see God say, where are you coming from? Get out of this place. Michael, take care of him. Take him out of here. No. God said, where are you coming from? He said, from walking to and fro. And God had a conversation with him. Have you considered my servant Job? He said, oh. God said, it's okay. I leave him in your hands. Go do whatever you need to do, but don't touch his life. A conversation. Another time, look at First Kings. God said, who would deceive Ahab to go to war? And the Bible said, every angel, everyone in that meeting spoke one way or the other, but it didn't work, it didn't tally. And then the Bible said, there came a spirit, that was the devil. He showed up. He said, what's going on here? God, God is asking a question. What's the question? They told him. He said, oh, I have an answer. He said, hey, Lord, I know what to do. God, God asked him, what are you going to do? He said, I'll become a lying spirit. And that's how we know he's the devil. I'll become a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. And God said, mm, good one. Oh yeah, go and prevail. I give you authority to go. See that? Now? He didn't say, what? Get out, Michael, out. Tell him out. Nah. You see, now that's the wisdom of God that even Satan can be useful to him. <laughs> you see how kingly we can reason with God. That Satan can be useful even to you. No, I don't want Satan in my life. I don't want Satan around me. I don't want Satan. There are things, there are things that God will have to do in your life that Satan needs to play a role. <laughs> so say, ah, no, no, I don't want, please, no. No, there are things. Like, that's why I shared Peter, Peter's story with you. God had to involve Satan in the matter to save Peter's life. Say, how can God use Satan to save the life of his son? Where are all the angels? Ah, I shared with you the circumstance. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray the Lord give you understanding. Now, if we talk about finances also, how you see is surely going to affect your finances. There are people who never believe that God can bless them without them doing any job. They never believe it. Now, they love to work hard. It looks good. They love to make their money. They are honest people, not, not defrauders or not fraudsters. They love to do honest labor, to earn money, to earn a living. Now, when you see such people, they look good. But you see, it becomes a problem. It becomes a problem. 
Because you see, that mindset, that attitude, which is according to the light that they are operating by, hinders them now from entering into God's blessing. And you see, God, the higher you grow in God, the more you begin to realize certain things in your life. And, and, and some, of, some of you have not even started that journey. You, you see Jesus meeting this rich young guy. And the guy came to him and said, Master, I want life. What must I do? And Jesus said, you know the law, go keep it. He said, I've done this from my youth. Something is missing. And Jesus looked at him. And the Bible said Jesus loved him. And he said to him, if you want to be perfect, it's condition. If you want to be perfect, go sell everything you have. Give to the poor and come follow me. Woo! Now, was Jesus intimidated by his riches? No. Does Jesus love them poor? No. So why would Jesus look at this man who have loved God from his youth and who we believe, because when you love God and keep his commandment, he will bless you. Whom we believe has walked in the blessing of God all his life. And he is rich. He didn't steal to become rich. He, he, was, not, he was not a tax collector that was defrauding people to be rich. He kept God's law from his youth. So he had not cheated anybody. Now he was standing before Jesus and telling him, all these things I have kept from my And Jesus could have told him, you're a liar. I know how you made your money. The Bible says Jesus beholding him, loved him. And said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell everything you have, give to the poor and come for me. Why can't he take everything he has to follow Jesus? I'll tell you why. Because it will not stand. It will not stand. Oh, le pronigi, You don't understand these things. And, and that's why I'm talking to you about light. Light. Because it won't stand. You know, some, some of you think that, Oh, I have, I have, you know, you know, sometimes we think, God, bless me with, I want to be a billionaire so that I can push your gospel. It sounds wonderful. It sounds excellent. But I bet you that's not how God operates. Oh, he blesses people. He uses the wealth of people. You understand what I'm saying? But you thinking that I need to become a billionaire so that I can be giving God in billions. And they say, now I've arrived. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. So when you think that God has to do things like this, for example, you know, you know sometimes... You know, we, we want to help people. So as preachers, we preach, go get a job so that God can bless you. The truth is, you don't need a job before God blesses you. You don't need. You don't need it. Now, we, we say that so that, I mean, you can live a sort of responsible lifestyle. See that now? So that's the care. That's the concern. But then if someone actually believes that you need a job for God to bless you, he is looking at that thing from the wrong light. So why do you say that? Read your Bible. God took care of a whole nation. God took care of a whole nation for 40 years. None of them had a job to do. None of them had a farm to farm. None of them had any business to transact for 40, not 40 days, 40 years. God sustained a whole nation and he did not complain. Have you ever wondered, and, and guess the amazing thing, at the end of 40 years, God says, no guys, these guys don't get what I'm trying to show them. So you know what? They will not enter into my rest. 
you you would think now now why was why why what was the problem of the people for 40 years they were waiting for the day they will get back to doing their jobs they were waiting for the year the day they will get back to farming their own farm crop you know stuff they were getting they were they were thinking when are we going to start doing things by ourselves you know we want and then god said look these guys they didn't get it their eyes couldn't be flooded with that light God was trying to lead them into a land that flows with milk and honey. A land that he said you don't have to till the ground. And that he started preparing them for that kind of lifestyle. And for 40 years, these people couldn't adapt. Why? Light. The light, the, the wrong light, which is darkness, was so strong in them. Our time is up. We'll continue to move. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.